Welcome to Indy's Real Estate Gurus. I'm Rick Ripma, your hardworking mortgage guy, and I've been in real estate and mortgages for over 34 years. My team and I believe in custom-tailored loans, not the one-size-fits-all approach. We believe there is a right mortgage for you, and we believe we are the team to deliver it. And I'm Ian Arnold, part of Rick's hardworking mortgage teaming. I've been in the financial industry for 15 years, helping customers rebuild their credit, get the best possible interest rate, and I have a passion to help you secure your overall real estate dreams. Uh, and if you're anything like me, pay your home off even faster. And if you have any questions on mortgages or the Indies real estate market, please go to hardworkingmortgageguys.com. That's hardworkingmortgageguys.com. Or you can give us a call at 317-672-1938. That's 317-672-1938. And today we have Sarah Noel. 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 See? You added a few extra letters there, sir. I Come did. on, an yeah, easy yeah. one. And I know that. I know. <laughs> well, I mess up most people's names. I don't know why. And everybody I mess up does. My it own. looks like, you know, it's very convenient at Christmas time. So. Yes. Yeah. So I apologize. That's okay. And you're with, you're with, there's like the Stewart Home Group. Correct. Okay. The and Stewart then you, you have your own team, team which yep. is uh, Sarah and Co. Real Estate with Style. So Sarah okay. and Company, Sarah and Co. Okay. Perfect. And we all, we like to start with what what were you what did you do before real estate? Where'd you grow up? You know, what yep. was life um, like? I grew up in a small town in Morgan County called Wilbur. Um, if you blink, oh, you'll miss it. Never it's, heard of it. it. Yeah, Monrovia High School. So I graduated okay. from Monrovia High School. Um, actually married a guy that I went to school with. We were just friends. Um, we've been married almost twenty four years. Uh, Are you still friends? Not really. No. <laughs> <laughs> just kidding. Yes, yes, yes. He's my best friend. Um, yeah, we've been married almost 24 years. Um, our very first house together was in Decatur Township, and we just so desperately wanted to get back in that Morgan County area, you know, as we got married and started a family. Um, so we've been in Mooresville now for 18 years, I think. We lived in Hall for a little bit, a subsidiary of Monrovia, um, and then moved back to Mooresville in 2006. So we've been there. Um, both of our kids are out of school. Our daughter graduated from Mooresville High School in 2019. Our son started in Mooresville last two years, went to Monrovia and lived out his mom and dad's legacy there, <laughs> yeah. I guess, and just graduated by the grace of God this past May. So Wow, that's awesome. Yeah. Now, what's he doing now? Um, he's working at a place in Mooresville called Equipment Technologies. They build Apache Farm Sprayer. So. Oh, wow. Yeah. Yeah. He's awesome. been there since February. How about your daughter? What um, she is a bartender slash server. Um, she is start, has just started her senior year of college at Indiana University East. She's doing everything online. Um, psychology major and double minor in criminal justice and neuroscience. Wow. So, wow. yeah, so she's trying to get a big girl job now. And she's, you know, after her undergrad in May, when she graduates, then she'll start graduate school. And her lifelong dream is to be an adolescent therapist. So. Wow. And she wants to work in the prison system. Well, she's so being a bartender is a good good lineup for yeah, that kind of thing. That's exactly <laughs> what it is. Yeah, yeah. She said she does a lot of therapy sessions with her yeah. regulars. So. Yeah. Yeah. I, that's what I did when I was in yeah. school. I bartended. It was a great, it's a great job. Yeah, yeah. she likes it. So. Yep, she enjoys it. Yeah. So then how did it go from there to into real estate? So I was in healthcare. I've been in healthcare all of my adult career. Um, started, you know, working front office, answering phones, scheduling. Um, ironically enough, and this goes against HIPAA, that's how I met my broker slash owner, Stephanie Stewart. Um, and, you know, I did that for so long and then ran into her um, back in 2018. She kind of convinced me to, to do this part time. I had no desire until this year um, when my son was out of school and um, decided to go ahead and do it. Did it part time for about a year and a half. Um, but in healthcare, I did everything, like I said, from front office, um, kind of worked my way up into training and support for the electric electronic medical record system um, for a large healthcare organization here in the city or in Indy. Um, and then worked my way into leadership and, uh, you know, got into this, like I said, 2019, doing it part-time for about a year and a half. Um, during 2020, you know, the year of COVID and yeah. realizing how hard everything was, um, you know, there had just been a lot of leadership changes and things like that. And I had to, you know, March 17th, 2020, shut down two clinics, um, bring all of my providers home to figure out how to do virtual care, all of my employees home to figure out how to provide and support the providers doing wow. virtual care. Um, and it was almost like the day that I came home, my real estate just skyrocketed and um, realized by the end of 2020 that I can excel and be more successful um, financially, personally, professionally in this industry and had several uh, meetings and dinners and lunches with Stephanie and said, I think I want to do this. And we figured out a, an exit strategy and a game plan. So I would say I retired from healthcare at the end of 2020 and um, started doing this full time. Wow. Best career decision I've ever made. Yeah. And you've done phenomenally well. 
I would like to think. <laughs> thank yeah, you. You've done thank phenomenally you. well. It's awesome. Yeah, thank so, you. So I know she's sitting in the room just so people know. So <laughs> she'll, uh, you'll probably owe her money or here in a little bit. But how has she mentored you? Oh, my gosh. Um, she's really made me believe in myself. Um, the things that I have been able to accomplish, um, I never thought were possible. Last year was a huge eye-opening year for me. Um, you know, it was my second year full-time as a realtor. And just the goals and the achievements that I accomplished, um, again, I never thought would be possible. And she's, she's just, she's our biggest supporter. She's our biggest cheerleader. Um, she provides training and tools. We have, you know, bi-monthly lunch and learns. We have industry ex experts come in, whether it's title, whether it's, um, you know, a representative from MIBOR. Um, you know, service industry. We have, you know, plumbers come in, we have HVAC people come in, um, really just our biggest supporter, our biggest cheerleader. And, you know, she, she's doesn't really produce much anymore because she thrives on watching us succeed. So. Yeah. Well, we find that it's having the a proper mentor and the right team seems to be the way to success in real estate in this world. Absolutely. Absolutely. And I think it, that's a big change from years and years ago mm -hmm. when nobody had that opportunity. Right. Now they have that opportunity. And you're a, a living example of that. You had you had a great mentor. You have a, and she's also awesome because she loves cars. So yes, <laughs> you, every, you learned that a few minutes. We already ago. got we yes. already got that. You know that that says everything. Yeah. Okay. So I, I we just find that it's really important. So you've talked about it a little bit. How, how has that? Well, you have your own team now, mm -hmm. correct? Yes. So how do, how have you been able to take what her mentorship, which they probably still get, and and institute it in, in your team? Um, so I try to live by example. So, you know, the way that she trained me to look over contracts and when writing a purchase agreement or a listing contract, you know, there were several times, probably the first year and a half I was full time, every single contract I wrote, I wanted to make sure I was doing it correctly. So I would send it to her or one of our other managing brokers of our Mooresville office, Jack. And I'm like, hey, can you look at this? Make sure I'm not missing anything. Um, so I really handhold my team members, especially when they're brand new agents, because I tend to get a lot of the brand new agents and I'm OK with that. Um, I really want to give them the best tools that I can give. I, you know, I, I tell them I'm a little OCD with looking at your contracts because I want to make sure all of your I's are dotted, all of your T's are crossed. These are legal binding contracts and I right. want you to be protected. Um, I even get so finicky as like if something's not capitalized, I make sure they capitalize it or put a punctuation after it. Um, so I really just, I might be hard on them, but I also feel like I'm giving them the tools that they can have to be the best in the industry and not make those mistakes to land them in court. Yeah, well, it's a vitally important, although people may not realize it, we see we see the purchase agreements all the time. Mm -hmm. Right. And it's amazing. We'll look at some of them, we'll go, we can't believe that this this agent did this. They didn't protect yeah. their client at all. Right. Because right. the way they wrote the contract. Yeah, it's, absolutely. It's just probably lack of training. Oh, 100%. Yeah, 100%. And that's what I really try to, you know, strive for my team members. And, you know, like I said, I tend to have a lot of the newer agents that come on. And my vision for them is, you know, stay with me on my team as long as you want. I'll gladly have you. I'll, I'll keep you till the day I die. Um, but my vision is come in, let me train you, let me build you up, let me give you the tools that I have been afforded to have and the training that I've been afforded to have so that one day when my baby bird's ready to fly the nest, they can fly the nest and, and be successful as an independent agent if they so desire. Yeah. So are you still, are you recruiting currently? Are you looking for people on your team? Yes and no. <laughs> okay. um, I mean, not just anybody. I want the right people, right? Like we, you know, we are pretty close knit brokerage in general. Um, this year, the Stewart Home Group has grown by leaps and bounds, as has my team. Um, I kind of went from a team member of one to four overnight wow. um, back in, you know, November, December. Um, we've had a couple of changes. I just got a new team member a couple of weeks ago. Um, I'm in talks right now with about three other people. So, um, yeah, I'm always actively recruiting the right person, but it's got to be the right person to fit the role because, you know, we do have, everybody needs to get along. Everybody's got to have the right personality. So I don't just right. want a warm body. I want the perfect warm body. Yeah. Cause that matters. It does. It, matters it absolutely does. Um, you know, we, we are all women. I'm not opposed to having men on the team. I did have a man <laughs> at one point. Um, you know, my logo is pink and gray, so I always joke and say, I hope you're you're uh, strong in your masculinity because we have a lot of pink in the office, which, funny enough, I used to hate pink, and now it's like one of my favorite colors. Um, but, you know, I when I do my marketing stuff and I have my, my pop-up shop set up, I always make sure we have a black and white option, too. Um, but, yeah, I mean, being on, and, and healthcare is kind of a given. Like, it's always been a very predominantly female industry, so I know how to handle those personalities and, and attitudes, I guess, for lack of a better 
phrase for that. But um, yeah, I mean, it, it really takes the right person. I mean, it's okay to have a strong, independent personality. And it's okay to have that more passive personality, but we just need to make sure they're the right people to get along so that we are working cohesively as a team and we're producing. I mean, I, I don't mind you not producing, but be, be a team player. So. Yeah. What are you talking about? Being a team player? That's not, that's not important. Uh, <laughs> no, not at all. Not at all. <laughs> so how do you describe your brand? Um, you know, I have always said in this industry, my personal opinion is, and a lot of people agree with me, it's 95% relationship building and 5% selling. And it's not even really selling, it's more mentoring. Um, so my, my motto is I'm always going to be the kind one. I'm always going to be the professional one. I'm always going to be the one that answers my phone, answers my text messages, my emails. I'm always going to be the one that's a good communicator. When it comes to my clients, I'm not going to have you worry until it's time to worry. I try to take on as much stress as I can so that they don't have to. Um, and I think that comes from my healthcare background. Like I said, um, I came from a very large organization. And, you know, one of the things at one point we had a whole department devoted to service excellence. And I, that's one thing that I brought with me from my healthcare career is, um, you know, everybody's worthy of a hello. Everybody's worthy of a smile. Um, there's no sense in being nasty and hateful. There's no sense in being mean. So I want to be the ones that people look at my contracts and think, okay, they're, they've got their stuff together. They filled this out right. Um, they're easy to work with. They're easy to talk to. They're going to be honest. We're going to be ethical, um, you know, and just really try to put forth the, the best persona that we can. And it's not fake. I mean, it's, it's all real. I have real genuine people working on my team. So, yeah. And I, I think that's really important. I, one of the things that I find is, is the, you know, in the communication and you said, you know, you, you keep, you keep the, the bad things away as long as you can and try to solve them without that right. ever coming up. I think that's one of the misconceptions, why people have misconceptions of what a real estate agent actually does, because a good one keeps those things from the client. They never know that the, they never know the stress you went through to get them to the closing table. Yeah, I mean, there are seriously many nights I've lost sleep worrying about my clients because I want to take that on for them and not have to put that on right. them until it's time to, right? Right. Yeah, we have the same issue. Yeah. I just had one come up and it's, it it was a it was a, a a file that I I was pretty sure I was going to be okay on, but mm -hmm. I was still working on something getting it from the client and the real estate ask, agent asked me the question, right? So I'm not going to lie to him. I'm right. telling what and he went off, he went he was not happy. Yeah. Right. Why didn't you tell me sooner? Da, 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 da. Well, we're closing on Friday, just like we're supposed to. Everything. Yeah. I knew it was going to work out. I right. just had to get the information. Yeah. And I wouldn't have told them, but they asked. Right. Yeah. And it's like, you know, but as a, as a, you never know what, when to tell somebody that's, the, that's the hardest part about it. how do you know when to, when, okay, I need to, I need to bring it up. Well, in a perfect world, um, after closing, because they don't <laughs> even need to know that we had those issues. Just know that we got to the closing table. I made it work. Um, but obviously, you know, if I get to a situation where I'm never going to be dishonest with my clients or with any other agent or right. lender that I'm working with, um, but you know, I, I try to figure out and problem solve on the back end. How can we do this? So I try when it's time to come to them, I try to come to them with, okay, I want to tell you something, you know, this, this is kind of an issue. It's a hiccup, but these are the solutions that I think we can come up with. What do you want to do? What, what? out of option A, B, and C, which one do you prefer? Um, and if there are no options, then, you know, we, we, I involve the experts who, you know, mentor me. So Stephanie or Jack or, you know, Lindsay, our managing brokers, our owner, and, you know, we figure out a solution. So nine times out of 10, we can make it work. There's nothing harder than when you have no solution for it. I, I do the same thing. You've got to go find a solution for whatever yeah. it is. Yeah. Go find a solution and then you yeah. can, it's a lot easier. And even in healthcare, you know, working with all of the physicians over the years that I've worked with, um, that's kind of always how I was, how I was brought up, I guess, in management and healthcare was, you know, if you have a problem, that's fine. I don't mind telling me the problem, but come to me with a solution before you present the problem to me. So I always would try to find a solution before I would bring that to my providers or my senior leaders or, you know, anything yeah. like that. So. Critical. So there is a problem though. We have a problem right now. Okay. People don't know how to contact you. Oh, so what is <laughs> that? That is a problem. That's a huge problem. So let's give them a solution. Sure. What's um, the best way? I am a huge texter. I answer my phone. I don't mind ta talking on the phone at all. Uh, my number is 317-987-8135. Um, you can call, text, my email. You'll find on the website link. Um, again, my number is 317-987-8135. And to get a hold of Ian or I, go to hardworkingmortgageguys.com. That's hardworkingmortgageguys.com. Or you give us a call at 317-672-1938. 
317-672-1938. And thanks for listening to Indy's Real Estate Gurus. The gurus we interview share valuable insights. They reveal their strengths, personalities, and how they'll work for you. While we hardworking mortgage guys secure your best mortgage, real estate agents and gurus, mostly real estate gurus, work hard too. See how I messed that up? It's all right. They avoid problems the amateurs don't, don't see. They listen. And they, real, and they find unrealized opportunities. If you're buying or selling a home, a real estate guru is a valuable asset. If you're even thinking of buying or selling a home, keep listening and definitely call one of Indy's real estate gurus. See, I mess up all the time, so I'll at least let you have one or two. Thank you. Finally. <laughs> all right. So we're going to take a sidestep from real estate. Let's okay. get to know you more. Okay. So let's take away your phone for 24 hours. After you get off the floor in a fetal position crying, uh, what do we catch you doing for fun? You know, um, I used to always say fall was my favorite season, and it is, um, but we are at a point in our life where our kids are older. Um, obviously, they're not in sports or travel sports or anything anymore. Um, we have a boat. We have a camper we keep at a campground down in French Lick, um, and that's kind of our summer. I love being on the water. Um, you know, this 100-degree day is going to be awesome. I wish I were on the water, you know, letting it be <laughs> yeah. awesome. Um, I just, I really enjoy vacationing. I love the beach. I love the lake, anything like that. Um, I probably will have a huge anxiety attack. If you take my phone away, my husband would tell you I can't survive without my phone. And he's, he's kind of right. Um, but yeah, just anything as far as like, I love vacationing. Um, I do love spending time with my family. My kids are obviously older now, 22 and 18. So, um, you know, those, those few weekends that they come down and bring their friends, I I thoroughly enjoy it. So that's kind of, that's kind of my, perfect day is just get me on the boat, 100 degree day, perfect sun, let me float on a raft and just enjoy music and a couple of drinks. So So here in a couple of years, once the kids are fully gone, Uh they're moving to Florida. I can see it. Uh, I don't know. My in-laws live in Florida for about six months out of the year and they swear it's too hot in the summer. So, um, you know, I have, I have a younger brother who's, um, he's about nine years younger than me. So he's got younger kids and my mom's kind of getting up there in age. I don't know that I could quite move away from them. Um, but I could definitely see a vacation house on the beach. <laughs> yeah. You're the first person that I've ever talked to, I think, that says they like 100-degree weather. Only when I'm in the water. <laughs> <laughs> like, I, I, is it going to be 100 today? I think the heat index is going to be like 110. Oh, perfect. Yeah. I'm glad I'm inside. Yeah. That's I mean, you know, like I said, I only like it on the water, but um, I... I try to tan as much as I can. So give, yeah. give me the sunscreen. Me give me too. The this is yeah. it. <laughs> I feel like I'm pale for this time of year. Yeah. Well, you're not. You're tan. <laughs> uh, there's pale. So um, we're going to get back to real estate. Sure. Get get away from me and back to real estate. What What would you say your your uh, superpower? Superpower. Hey, wow. Why can't you I remember that? This, this is your favorite question. I know it is. And I, and I like, see, this is what happens when you get old. Uh, old timers. It's, well, that, we're, we're really about to, we're, what it was called. it's about to be put oh, out. Yeah, the the old, oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yes. When I was in high school, I took a vocational class at Ben Davis. It's called health occupations. And I remember arguing with the teacher, like, it's not Alzheimer's, it's old timers. She's like, no, Sarah, it's Alzheimer's. It's like, no, that's not what my mom said. <laughs> <laughs> well, I kind of like it as old timers. That, that sounds better. Right? right. Let's go with that. Yeah. So what, what would you say your, your superpower superpowers are? Um, gosh, that's a tough one. Cause you know, you don't really think of yourself as having a superpower. Um, I guess I have the gift to gab. I mean, I think all realtors love to talk and, you know, we, we love to talk about ourselves sometimes, but when you ask us something like that and put us on the spot, it's a little difficult. Um, I mean, I'd like to think that my superpower is I try to give everyone the benefit of the doubt. Um, I try to be compassionate and I feel like I have a good read for people. So I guess that would be kind of an, I'm, I'm intuitive. I can sit and talk to somebody for five or 10 minutes and kind of get an idea of how I need to change or um, camouflage myself to fit what they're looking for and what they need. Um, that's one thing in this industry, you have to be a chameleon. And I think I'm pretty good at that. So yeah, because you have to, you have to communicate in the way they want to be Correct. communicated with. Correct. And you, because we want to make sure people understand that's not a bad thing. It's a great thing. 100%. Because yes. of you're, you're trying to adjust to the, be the best for the customer. Yeah. Yeah. It doesn't mean that your personality, those things change. It's just that you're just really letting them communicated to them the way they want to be right. communicated. Right. And, and communication style, right, too. Like, how do, you know, if I'm working with somebody who is um, of a more 
veteran generation, they may not want to text. They may want to pick up the phone and call. They may not want a phone call at eight o'clock at night. They may not want a phone call on a Saturday or Sunday. That's part of being a chameleon. I'm going to play off of what they need and what they want and do the best to provide that service to them. Yeah, that's funny because I didn't think about it, but it's actually actually very accurate that that not wanting to call or, or text uh-huh. in the evening and weekends because we weren't, I mean, my generation kind of is, but I have some friends that are a little older and they, they are not. And they do not want, no. I mean, that, they don't want that at all. Yeah. I never thought of that. That's, I should, I, I'm going to have to implement that. Yeah. Thank you. No, you're welcome. I had a, um, an elderly couple move up here recently um, from out of state. And, you know, we, we worked together for almost two years and we wrote several offers. And we all know how hard it's been to get offers accepted over the past couple of yeah. years. Um, and I remember the first couple of times I called him on a Saturday and he's like, why are you calling me? I was like, because I have an update. He's like, I don't care. I can wait till Monday. Go spend time with your family. And it's like, okay. And yeah. that was awesome. Yeah. And the coolest thing about him when they finally closed after almost two years, and they actually are my neighbors now, which is even funnier. Um, they bought a house from a young couple who had two young kids. And I have pictures of him at the closing table playing with little figurines and cars with the kids. So <laughs> that's that's awesome. probably one of my favorite stories. They're yeah. the cutest couple. I will say this. It's interesting. The amount of respect and leniency you get, you give as you get older. Mm -hmm. It's uh, just like you said, I mean, that guy's sitting there playing with your kids, playing with cars while you're doing everything else because they've been there. Mm -hmm. They raised the kids. They, they, all right, my kid's sick. All right, I got to go to work. What do I do? I mean, all the situations, bring my kid to work day. (laughs) So it's, it's very interesting and uh i saw it with rick especially when my kids got sick and covid and mm-hmm. i'm like hey look i gotta be home i gotta do this and rick's like yeah i've been there i know yeah. what you're going through yeah yeah it is and you know this is a, the beautiful thing about our career is we can be flexible like that mm. um you know if you're punching that clock monday through friday eight to five sometimes it is difficult as as a working parent whether you're working dad working mom because mom can't always take off work and dad can't always take off work so yeah absolutely you know flexibility i think if there's one positive that came out of COVID, it was the ability for more people to be able to work remotely so yep. that they can stay home and give the Gatorade and the chicken soup to their kid as they're you know, trying to break that fever. So. That seems to slowly be changing. It seems like yeah. more and more companies are starting to bring their people back in. Mm-hmm. I wonder how that's going to affect things where all the you know, people bought farther away from work or, you know, we had a lot of people, I think, move in from California and were working remotely. Yeah. So you wonder what's going to happen in that, those situations, yeah, how that'll affect our market. Yeah, it makes me wonder if they'll just find new jobs. I mean, potentially, right. you know, because that's such a huge desired thing right now. Like my daughter, like I said, at 22, trying to find her first big girl job, you know, that's a key thing for her because she's been remote school online for two years now. Um, and she's like, I want to find a work from home job. It's like, good luck. They're not as available as they were three years ago. <laughs> I, I don't know how you work. I don't know how you do school from from home. I could never have done that. I, I couldn't do it. Could. I couldn't do it from from his classroom. <laughs> I would have never gone if it was unlocked. I actually did. I did my. Did um, really? I, I have my associate's degree. Um, I did that while working in healthcare to you know better my position there. Right. Did 100 percent online, and I didn't think she could do it. You know because when COVID shut down, she went to Franklin College her first two years, and um, you know her freshman year when they shut everything down, she she tanked and you know got put on academic probation and didn't want to go back and. Now she's rocking it. I mean, yeah. she's got like a 3.82 or something wow. like that. So That's awesome. It's crazy, yeah. Yeah, it just changed. Things change. So what what is something you learned that you would, you would tell a newer agent? If you don't know the answer to something, don't make it up. Tell, the, tell your client or whomever you're working with, you know, I'm not sure. Let me get back to you and try to seek out that answer. And that's been my whole career, whether it's healthcare, whether it's real estate, whether it's whatever. Don't don't make up something. Be honest and truthful because that's going to earn respect more than anything else. Did you just make that up? I did not. <laughs> I did not. No, that's kind of my motto. That's how I live. I mean, I will always say if I don't know the answer, you know what? I'm not sure that's a great question. Let me get back to you on that. And I get follow through, right? Don't just say I'll get back to you and then never pick up the phone and call. Follow through. So that's the key. Yeah. It's it's incredibly helpful. If you don't know the answer, just tell people you don't know the answer. Right. But if you don't get back, that yeah. you're done. Yeah, absolutely. And I think I think there's people, I know there are, that will ask a question that they know the answer to mm-hmm. just to see if you'll answer it accurately. The response, yeah. Yes. Yeah, I agree with that. Yeah. 
Because I do that. Yeah. <laughs> I, I don't necessarily. But yeah, no, I, there of definitely of people do. Yeah. I yeah. Mean, you know, respect is a huge, huge thing in this industry. Your reputation is a huge thing in this industry. And I never want to be known as somebody who's A, unethical, B, dishonest, or C, just doesn't care. Because that's not me as a person. And, right. you know, I will do anything and everything in my power to keep my reputation strong and, and respected. So one of the biggest things we see a very very big struggle for brand new agents is getting going. Mm -hmm. It's it's how do they get going? What did you do? What do you teach your people to do to get going when they just get into the business? Sure, um, follow through A is huge. Um, we're very fortunate that with our brokerage, we you know we get a lot of company provided leads. Um, I remember in my many, many dinners and lunches with Stephanie before I decided to do this full time, one of the things that she said repeatedly to me that I constantly tell my team, my top producing agents are in the office every day. So I try to always at some point during the day, be in the office. Because even if you're not doing anything actively, just being around your peers and hearing the, the commotion and just seeing everybody in action, it's going to motivate you. You know, when you see somebody and you look at their production board and they've got $3 million pending, you know, and that brand new agent's like, oh, I just really wish I could get there. Well, you will, but you got to put in the work to get there. Um, I always say it's good money. It's not easy money. You can't treat it as a part-time position and expect full-time pay. You just have to put in the work. And I think being present, going to as many trainings as you can, um, as many opportunities that are out there, whether it's from our brokerage or just, you know, the divisions of different MyBoards across the state, um, you know, just networking, getting getting out there to know your industry experts. So I think that's huge. Yeah, it, I, I have a, my personal trainer is actually becoming a real estate. He mm -hmm. has, he's just started. He has a person who kind of is mentoring him. And he was saying that he's looking for all those type mm -hmm. of things. He's going to, he said, I found these seminars I can go to and they teach me this, and they teach me that. And it's, that's incredibly valuable because yeah. you gotta, you gotta feel comfortable in what you do. And you, you get leads and your team is able to get leads. Mm -hmm. um, if somebody doesn't have that, what, what, what kind of thing can they do? Or, or with maybe a better question, when they have a lead, what do you do with the lead? Because maybe I think people may not even know what, what do you do with it? Yeah. So um, you, you might be asking and not to toot my own horn, but a little bit of the lead guru and right now, because the, one of the lead streams that we have, um, I've actually been appointed as kind of training on, um, you know, and their website registration leads, right? Like we all have, have to have those somewhere. Um, you can't just touch them one time. You can't just call them one time. You've got to reach out six, seven, eight, nine times. Um, I, I always tell them, be a stalker. Who cares if they yell at you and hang up? You're not calling them as a cold call out of the blue. They've registered. They're right. looking for information. Provide them that information. Try not to sound like a salesperson when you call. Just say, hey, I saw you were looking at this house on 123 Main Street. How can I help you? What questions can I answer? Um, you know, somebody that doesn't have the benefit of having leads um, you know, sphere of influence, right? Like I would tell all of my new people, um, same thing that was taught to me when I first came into this part-time even, you know, at least 50 people that you can get their addresses, start your database. You need to be sending them mailers. If you have their phone numbers, call them, shoot them a text message. Hey, just want to let you know, like I've just gotten into real estate, um, partner with, a, you know, partner up with a lender and see if they'll do a mailer for you, a postcard, like introducing yourselves, um, find neighborhoods to farm, you know, make a flyer and go, throw flyers in mailboxes to say, hey, do you want to know what your home is worth? You know, just all of the traditional things. You do have to put in the hard work, um, you know, maybe not back in the, you know, before my time, you know, go and physically knocking on a door. There's nothing wrong with that. I've done that. Um, I've gotten response from that. Right. Um, but yeah, I mean, I think you just have to put in the hard work. And, you know, the biggest thing is, and I'm not great at social media. Um, I wish I were better. I, I do every Friday. I do a video called my feel good Friday. So, um, that that's my, my claim to what I do on social media. And I try to share others posting things every now and then, um, or post things out every now and then and share my colleagues, you know, new listings and stuff, but market yourself on social media. We're in an era right now where that's huge. Social media is huge. Even TikTok. you know, I literally just started following on Facebook a, a realtor that I found in Las Vegas who I follow her TikTok channel and she's awesome. I love her to death. She's cute as can be and she's just fun and happy-go-lucky. Um, so market yourself, get out there, you know, send those mailers, call your sphere, email your sphere. If you have their email addresses, send them the postcards, send them Christmas cards, you know, send them Colts calendars, whatever the case may be. Um, you know, my past clients, I every year send a Christmas card and I throw a lottery ticket in it. 
So just something kind of fun to do to keep my name at the top. So if somebody's wanting to get this lottery ticket after they purchase a home from you or sell, how would they get in contact with you? <laughs> 317-987-8135. Um, call or text again, 317-987-8135. Yeah. Now with this lottery ticket though, do they have to split it with you if they win big? I wish, but you know they're not going to tell me. <laughs> That's probably Until true. they come back to me and say, okay, I've got a million dollar budget and I'm going to be cash. Yeah. That would be a beautiful thing. That would be a beautiful thing. That's how they give it back. That's why I don't give it to, I, I could never give tickets away because I could, it would kill me if I gave away a, you know, a $350 million ticket. Yeah. Yeah, I yeah. mean, and you probably wouldn't know because chances are they aren't going to live in Indiana. Yeah, they probably are, <laughs> and, and the chances aren't very great. There, I mean, it's like one in three hundred million. Right. But right. yeah, it's just that you know, that just that thing. To get a hold of Ian, and I, Ian or I, go to hardworkingmortgageguys.com. dot com. That's hardworkingmortgageguys.com. dot com, or you can give us a call at three one seven six seven two nineteen thirty eight. That's three one seven six seven two. 1938. All right. And now we'll do the question of the week. And the question of the week is sponsored by, hey, Rick and I, the hardworking mortgage guys, where we believe in helping and supporting you and your realtor by sending constant updates to the loan process. We don't like living in a black hole, so we do not allow you to live in a black hole. All right. So here's a really tough question. Oh, Lord. And to be honest with you, I wish we'd have your boss on here instead <laughs> of you on this for this question, but we'll leave it like that. Okay. What was your first car? Uh, it was a 1986 Mercury Lynx that I would argue was red, but had an orange hue to it. And it was a four-speed manual. So you argue it's red because you didn't want to admit it was orange? Correct. <laughs> <laughs> so you're in luck. Cause for me, I, I have trouble with orange. I, I can't even really see most orange colors. So. <laughs> I swore it was red. <laughs> yeah, that's how you do it. Yeah, 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 yeah. that's good. As Lynx, so the, uh, yesterday the person had the... The same car, right? What the no. links though? It was no. A, they had a Jeep and a Mini Cooper. Yeah, they had now, but I, I thought somebody had a, had. I thought they had the Mercury Lynx and the they had the Ford Escort or something. Yeah, that well, that's, the, the they Ford, were the same she, car. She had right? the Ford yeah. Escort. Yeah, yeah. yeah that so was the it. same yeah. car. Yeah, Mercury yeah. Lynx, Ford Escort, yeah. same car, but, essentially. I mean, they're little cars, but they. That was the first car my wife and I bought together. And yeah, it was a pretty nice little car. Yeah, I loved it. Yeah, I loved it until I didn't. Yeah, what happened to it? Um, I traded it in for a 1995 Saturn okay. Sports Coupe. Okay, sometimes finding out what happened to it is some of the most interesting part of the, the first car. No, I, I <laughs> traded it. I, I remember um, I was laying in bed one day, you know, because as a teenager, you want to sleep in. And um, I had graduated high school midterm, so I hadn't officially walked and got my diploma. And I had went to the Saturn store in Greenwood and okay. found a 95, it was white little sports coupe, five-speed manual, cutest car in the world. And I was like, oh, I want that car. Um, and I remember I was probably 10 or 11 o'clock the next morning and my dad calls me and he's like, did you go get the car? And I was like, no. He's like, what are you doing? I said, I'm in bed. And he's like, how are you ever going to make it in this life if you just sleep your life away and you're never going to know if you don't get that car unless you get up there and sign papers. I was like, okay. Came home with it that afternoon. Well, that's great. But yes. he did it. So, so he was kind of teaching you also not to sleep, you know, early, right. what, early to bed, early to rise. My dad was a huge early riser. Um, looking back, if there's one thing I regret, all of those Saturday and Sunday mornings that he would get me up at seven to go to breakfast and I didn't do it. I wish I had some of those back, but yes, yeah. very much an early riser. Yeah. It's hard to see the future. Right. right. Yeah. So you got to start them early. That's what I've done with my kids. So I play basketball Saturday uh -huh. mornings and I get up at five 30. So they'll get up with me. We'll go play basketball at six 30. Now they usually run around with a couple of other kids, but afterwards we go get donuts. Oh yeah. So that makes them want to go every single time. Yeah. I would, my son, 18, like I said, I still, Every morning, my alarm goes off to make sure he gets up and goes to work on time. My, my husband's like, why are you doing this? He's 18. I was like, I know, but I don't want him to get fired. <laughs> well, that, then I have to pay his bills. Yeah. My wife would say, that's that's because I'm a mom. You wouldn't understand because I'm the mom. I get that. That's yeah, true. That's, she, that's true. I think she uses it just so I can't argue. Yeah. Yeah, probably. <laughs> so it's impossible. Has any of your kids shown interest in real estate? Um, My son more so than my daughter. Um, I'm very proud that they tell me all of the time how proud they are of me. Um, my whole family will tell you they've seen a difference in me since I've done this full time that I'm just a happier person. Um, my daughter, you know, like I said, she wants to be an adolescent therapist and work in the prison system. She wants to save the world and I believe she will. My son, on the other hand, he wants to make as much money as he can as quickly as he can. And we were actually having this conversation last night. 
Um, yes, he, he has shared interest in wanting to get his license more to be on the investment side of things. Um, his plan last night, as he shared with us, is he wants to save some money and buy a house just to rent so he can still live with us for free as much as he can, as long as he can. Um, and then, you know, once he kind of starts making money, then buying more rentals, I'm like, well, more power to you. I don't want to be a landlord, but if you can do it, go right ahead. So what would your exact response for him living here with you forever and just right now? My kids can live with me forever. I don't care. <laughs> that just means my grandkids will live with us. <laughs> that's, that's the mom response. That is the, the dad mom. response yeah. is yeah, yeah. get out. <laughs> well, what's funny is a friend of mine who actually works for another brokerage is her own brokerage. Um, she has like the perfect multi-generational house right now and had a broker's open this week. And I've shown the house a couple of times and I was telling my son about it last night and I was like, this would be perfect. He's, I was like, you and your sister and her boyfriend can live upstairs. It'd be like your own private apartment. He's like, oh, I'm not living with them. <laughs> He's like, they're slobs. And my husband's like, pot, meat, kettle. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's interesting though. So your son wants to get into investment property. Mm -hmm. And I, I was listening to somebody, I can't remember who it was, but they were saying that one of the best ways to get to, to wealth is buy a house, live in it two years, make it a rental, buy another house, live in it two years, make it a rental. And after 10 years, they said you'd have a million dollars in assets, but you don't really, but you know, yeah. it's still a, it's a good idea. And having a rental property, I think is a, a phenomenal way to, to long-term end up in wealth. Mm -hmm. Sure. So I'm sure you have some helpful words for him on how to buy a rental property. Are there ways, things that you look at or a certain type of property somebody should look at to make it a rental property? Um, I mean, for me personally, I've got a couple of investor clients right now. Um, one of them we're actively searching and they're from out of state. So they're really relying on me to be the boots on the ground. Um, and they appreciate that I try to do as much research as I can. So obviously you want to look at the area, right? Like, is it a better, you know, high producing rental environment geographically? Um, you know, I think for them, ideally, they're looking closer to college campuses. I always think that's a good idea because you can pretty much always keep that Full, right? right. You can always keep at least out. So I think that would be the biggest thing for me. Um, you know, you don't want to overpay for a rental property, obviously. And, you know, now may not be the best time, but yet we're starting to see the market shift. So I think that's a good thing. And I think there's definitely still opportunity out there for investors who want to get into leasing properties. Yeah. And I think it depends too on the type of pro on the type of rental you want. Uh, for instance, some people want you know, they're, they're looking at the long-term right. investment with an increase, sure. increasing in value. That, so a lot of their income is going to come off of equity. Right. Where other people, like I was talking to a friend of mine who's, a, who's an agent, and he has he has these uh, well, timeshare, mm -hmm. uh, not timeshare, what are those things? The, Airbnb. Airbnb. Yeah. And I can't think today. Airbnb. And he's and that's what he does. And he, and he does really well doing yeah. Airbnb. Me, that would scare me to death to yeah. worry about each, you know, am I going to get enough people in each each month? But bottom line is real estate is a great investment. Absolutely. Yeah. I actually sold a property last year um, that had an Airbnb on property um, on the southeast side of Indy. And you wouldn't think that it was a great area. But I mean, they were making twenty to thirty thousand dollars a year in income from their little cabin Airbnb. So, yes. yeah, great opportunity. And I heard. I, and I'm, I'm still looking into it to understand it, but I heard that there's a movement going on right now where people are putting on like a tiny home on their property next to their normal home or putting so that they can rent it out like that. And a lot of people <laughs> that call that want to look at land um, to either A, put a camper on it and live there, which, you know, a lot of land, you have to be cautious about the covenants, conditions and restrictions. Um, and yeah, I've been hearing a lot of that lately, too, where people are just calling up wanting to spend a few thousand dollars on land and put a couple of tiny houses there. And I mean, I, you never know. Yeah. You never know. Well, you can't do it in the neighborhood, but it seems right. like, like my neighborhood, I could actually do it in because we don't have a, we don't have a homeowner it, association yeah. as long as the you know, county let it, let it go. But it does seem like if somebody, especially somebody who may be struggling to make their payments, something like that, you put something in there where all of a sudden now you're getting thousand, two thousand dollars a month. That can be that can make a big yeah, that can make a big change yeah. for people. Yeah. Anyway, I just thought it was an interesting thing that that seems to be starting and they never yeah. start in Indiana. It doesn't seem like. Does no, anything no. ever start no, in we're Indiana? Always the last to do everything. <laughs> yeah, I know. It does seem that way. So is there anything that you're just super proud of in your in your business? There's a lot that I'm proud of. Um, I'm proud of myself for joy building a team. Um, I was so adamant about not wanting to be part of a team or be on a team for the first couple of years I was in this. 
Um, and then it was approached to me, you know, last summer, like, hey, I think you should join a team. I think that you would be really good at that. Um, I'm proud of my team members. Um, I'm proud that, yes, I'll give you my one defining point. So this past January, um, when I left my job in healthcare, my husband had a very stable job. Um, you know, when I first talked about leaving, he was like, oh, no, you can't. You have a stable paycheck and you carry yourself and the kids on insurance. And I'm like, yeah, but let me let's talk about this. Like, let's let, I don't show him my money or he doesn't know what I make. So he didn't know. So I sat down and told him and um, he was like, OK, we can really talk about this. So, you know, he carried us on insurance. You know, he, he made a pretty good salary. You know, we basically the first, last couple of months I worked in healthcare, lived off of his salary. I banked everything that I made just to make sure we could if I didn't have sales for six months. Right. Um, fast forward to this past January. And this was a company he thought he was going to retire from. Um, things happen kind of like the analogy that I give a professional sports team. If the team's doing poorly, who do they let go? The head coach. Um, so he was let go. So, you know, your immediate thought is, oh my gosh, what are we going to do? Literally didn't skip a beat. He didn't work for six weeks. And I will tell you, and you're going to laugh, but the only things I didn't do was get my nails done and have my housekeeper come. <laughs> Other than that, like we paid our bills, you know, we, we still lived. And that's something that I'm very proud of is that we were able to make it and not skip a beat where five or six years ago, maybe even three or four years ago, we would have been stressing. We would have gotten behind on bills. We wouldn't have known what to do for, you know, healthcare, whatever. I just got a short-term high deductible plan to cover emergencies, paid out of pocket for everything else. And we still survived yeah. and I didn't deplete everything. So that that's a huge defining moment for me. That lets me know that I made the right career decision and that I can support, you know, my family if God forbid something happens again. Yeah. Yep, and your husband's ready to retire now. He absolutely is. Yeah. He absolutely is. I don't think they're old enough. <laughs> well, he can. Be surprised. All right, so I want to hear some stories. So what do you think your most memorable deal was? Oh, I've had a few. Um, gosh, most memorable deal. That's a tough one because the one that I, I can think of, I don't know that I can share publicly. Um <laughs> It's not bad. Uh, just, you know, there was, I ha okay, I can say this diplomatically. I had a high profile client that I did not know was high profile. Um, it wasn't until I was helping them do some decluttering in the house. And um, I met them through a friend. They were related to my friend. Had known this friend for five or six years, never heard a word. Um, as we're looking through the house, this client says something along the line of, oh, I need to get rid of that because nobody needs to know who I am. And I'm like, what do you mean? Who are you? So, you know, I went out and Googled it and I was like, oh my gosh, I cannot believe I've known that this person's family member for six years and had no idea. Um, so that was kind of cool because, you know, and that just goes to show that I help people no matter your price range or your status or whatever. Um, but, you know, 10 years ago, he was a very high profile person. I didn't know who they were or he was. Um, so that was kind of a memorable story for me. I remember calling Stephanie, my broker, as soon as I left, like, you're not going to believe this. She's like, shut the front door. I was like, I'm serious. <laughs> that must be a realtor thing, shut the front door. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> so what would you, um, oh, see, you're, you're killing me, Ian. I, I can't think today. <laughs> I know your team, you have, you have, you said four members in your team? I do, yeah. Four, um, and like I said, I'm actively talking to a couple of other people, so by the end of the year, I could have five to six. And then her, count her son about to come in that. Yeah. Branch. Oh, I don't want him on my team. <laughs> he, he needs he needs somebody. You know. He needs somebody that can not mom them. Yeah, exactly. So, where, what are you looking at towards the future? Um, you know, we talk about investments. Um, my brother's a police officer. Um, once he gets his 20 years in, he'd like to be done being a police officer. And, you know, my husband, we are getting to the age where we can kind of think about retiring. I always said I retired from health care, so I'm on my retirement plan. Um, my 10-year plan is I would like to retire my husband. Um, you know, there's not a lot of people you go directly in business with, but I would my brother and his wife. Um, and I'd like to get into flipping properties. Um, okay. That's kind of, you know, what I would like my retirement plan to look like. Um, obviously, handle the real estate part of that and have my brother and my husband handle the, you know, construction part of that. Um, that's kind of my 10 year plan. You know, I can always pivot and readjust if I need to, but that's kind of what I, I look at in the future. Um, I think as real estate agents, we never truly retire. You know, you can go into referral, but are we ever really truly retired? So the one, everybody I've talked to, that's not in there. I mean, even, even the ones who have tried, mm -hmm. 
you just don't. They can't. Mm -mm. And, it, and, it's, and it's like, I, people are calling, one I'm thinking of specifically says, people keep calling me and what am I going to do? Not not help right, them? Right. I'm going to take care of them. They're, right. They've been my client forever. I'm going to yep. take care of them. And, he, and it's not, it becomes a lot less work. I know what I wanted to ask because you talked a lot about what I'll call misconceptions of real estate. Mm -hmm. Okay. One was you talked about how hard somebody has to work because I think it's interesting how people get, the, uh, they just have misconceptions of what a real estate agent does. So what are what what do you see those misconceptions are from a maybe from a new agent point of view? Like what do they mis they they just have this misconception about when they come into real estate what they're actually going to be doing? Um, I think that a lot of new and green agents, um, and this may go along with age too, because I look at my son for example, not to keep bringing him up. Um, I think they think it's easy money, and we're going to get rich really really quick, and you don't have to put in a ton of work. Um, I think a brand new agent maybe comes in and thinks, you know, my first month I'm going to close three houses and it takes time, like, right? right? It takes time. Um, you've got to put in the work. You've got to build your pipeline. Um, it's just, it's not easy. It's not easy money. It's the best career I think I could ever imagine myself being in. Um, if you would have asked me 10 years ago, what's your dream job? I probably would have said, I'm going to retire in healthcare. And by far, I'm so much happier now. And that's not a dig at healthcare. And, you know, I loved everyone that I worked with. I loved my providers. I loved my staff, my teams. Um, I love the connections that I made, but it's just, it's not easy money. It's good money. It's not easy money. You've got to work hard for it. You can't come in once a week and make three or four phone calls and think you're going to be a millionaire in the first three months. That's just not possible. Yeah. I mean, maybe it is if you sold a multi-million dollar house right away, but again, you're still, I mean, you what I see, one of the worst things I've seen happen is somebody does that. They do they do well right off the bat, and then they go spend all their money on all this expensive things, yeah. and then they it doesn't sustain itself. Right. Because markets change. Yes, and you have to change with the market. Yes, and it goes up and down, mm -hmm. and your sales go up. And I've been in yeah. sales my entire life. Sales yeah. go up, sales go down. You know, markets change, markets goes up, markets go down. There's some things you can do about it, but there's if the entire market crashes. You can do better than most, but you probably aren't going to right. be where you were. Right. Yeah. And you have, I mean, you have to continually educate yourself. If you're, you know, in a place that you're not getting those continuous tools and, you know, meetings and, and educational seminars or whatever, find your way to find that or you're not going to make it because you don't know how to shift and change. Yeah. I think the biggest thing I think Rick pointed a little bit is a lot of people, if you're not used to being commissioned, you don't understand yeah. that you're not, you're not guaranteed a paycheck next Ooh. week or the following week or, the following or week. in our business the next month. Right. Yeah. <laughs> and that's, you know, that's a big expectation you have to set with a new lender or a new yep. agent is, you know, even if you go under contract today, you're looking at 30 to 45 days before you get a paycheck and real estate's not cheap either. Like, you know, you, you have MIBOR fees to pay. You have, you know, transaction fees to pay. You have marketing fees to pay. You know, you've got to get your your promo items every, you know, ordered and everything. So it, it is an investment, but it's also a big return on investment too, right? Yep. Um, but yeah, and taxes. Everybody forgets about taxes. Put money back for taxes. Don't make that mistake to where you're scurrying come March or April, not knowing how you're going to pay your taxes. Yeah, that's a huge one. Yeah. For yeah. anybody who's self-employed, that yes. is a huge one. Yes. You've got to put it back. You should pay it quarterly. Yep. You know, we, we actually did a, because uh, I had a lot of agents asking, so we did a uh, podcast with a financial planner, yeah. and that's what they talked about. Yeah. Was that's part of what they talked about. It's interesting, too, that one of the things they talked about was, you know, I said, so what, what about investment? What should they do? Because I have lots of them ask me that. And he said, well, the number one, they're in real estate. They should buy real estate. Mm -hmm. You know, that's that's the, that's a great way to invest their money. You know, yeah. and he that doesn't benefit him, but he really right. believes if you're in yeah. real estate, that's what you know. That should be part of your investment strategy. Yeah. It sounds like that's part of your investment strategy. Yeah. Well, and you know, to Ian's point, you know, you get you, you get your first paycheck, and let's say it's five or six thousand dollars. And I mean, I'm guilty. I like my luxury things, but you know, that brand new agent may run up to Keystone at the Crossing and go meet my friend Sarah at the Louis Vuitton store and spend the three thousand dollars on a purse, but they're not. That's not sustainable. You've right. got to learn how to rebudget your money. You've got to factor in your annual fees that you have to pay. Um, just be smart about it. Find yourself a mentor. You know, even if, like I said, you're a small brokerage with nobody else there, just your managing broker. If your managing broker is not able to mentor you, find a partner. Find someone who can help guide you, who can help mentor you. You know, not only how to do your contracts, but, you know, how to 
handle those financial situations, how to budget your money so that come, you know, March and June, when you have to pay your MIBOR fees, you're able to do that. Yeah. There's so, a lot long term. Yeah. Yes. I want you to mentor and guide your customers to either buy or sell their home or uh, on, come on your team. So what's the best way they can get in contact with you? Call or text me at 317-987-8135, 317-987-8135. And the company again is the Stewart Home Group. The Stewart Home Group. And my team is Sarah and Company or Sarah and Co. And you guys you guys are out of Mooresville. Um yes, Mooresville, Plainfield, and we just opened a Martinsville office. Oh wow. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So but That's awesome. I've been known to sell as far south as Columbus. I've driven to Santa Claus to show houses and I've sold as far north as Warsaw. So really? I go anywhere. Yeah. Well that's I know. may refer you out, but for the most part, I yeah. go anywhere. And to get a hold of Ian or I, go to hardworkingmortgageguys.com. That's hardworkingmortgageguys.com, or you can call 317-672-1938. That's 317-672-1938. And please follow us for more Indies Real Estate Gurus. A reminder, if you have friends, family, or co-workers looking to buy, sell, or refinance, let us know. We'd be more than happy to help you. Uh, Sarah, thank you for joining us on our show today. Thank you for it, having me. It was a pleasure, and the stories, I liked them. Branch NMLS number 33041. Rip, Rip, NMLS number 6645890. Ian Arnold's NMLS number is 1995469. Equal housing opportunity. Some restrictions apply.